Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Rod Shop. Today we're going to do this five strand chevron wrap. I know this video gets long, but I'm going to take you through setup, layout, the wrap, tying it off, cleaning it up, and a trim band. So grab a cold one, top a squat, it starts now. Okay, it's been forever since I did a chevron wrap. Typically, those are used on larger diameter blanks, big boat rods, big saltwater rods. I've done a couple on like flipping sticks. I've not done one on this smaller diameter blank. This is only about, it's a little over half inch at the butt end, but we're going to give it a whirl anyway. Like I said, we're going to try one. Uh, this came from a subscriber with a question. And the question was, can you show us how to do a chevron wrap? So here we go. The most important part of any of these thread wraps, either it's a diamond wrap or cross wrap or fish wrap or any of these wraps is your layout. Now, I did my handle layout because this chevron is going to go from the reel seat forward about six inches. So here's what I've done so far. I splined a blank like you normally would. I know where my trigger is going to be. So I've marked my trigger side here. And that mark is off a little bit. So we're going to slide that one there. Okay, trigger side is marked. This tape here is one inch back from the end of my reel seat. And so it, this wrap will disappear underneath the reel seat. These marks are the opposite side, and I'll show you why you need that in a minute. I'll show you how I got that. This, I did, I took a piece of half-inch masking tape, and I wrapped around a blank a couple times, and I marked where my top line is going to be for layout, and then I peeled this off, and then wherever I laid it back over on that same mark, and then where my crease was was my opposite side. That's how I got my mark. That just makes it look prettier, symmetrical. Anyway, so I've got my layout. This is going to be the end of my chevron wrap here. This is going to be the beginning of it. I'm going to take this out of the way. Don't need that anymore, but we do need some more prep. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some tie off points. Now, again, I don't do this a lot, so we may wind up doing this a couple times, but without some good beefy tie up points, I don't want thread coming loose. So I'm going to go past the end of my wrap here. I'm going to make about two turns and then I'm going to flip the tape and make several more turns. And what I've just made that, I just made effectively is double sided tape. So it's sticky on the top now. And coming back here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Make a couple turns. Flip my roll and make a couple more turns. Now I've got somewhere to stick the thread to while I'm starting this wrap. Okay, next layout part is going to be where your intersections are. All right, guys, the camera let us down, and you really couldn't see exactly what you needed to see the way I was doing it before, so I I came back out, I got to show you this piece to get you started properly because without starting properly, it's really a waste of time because if you don't have this part, the very first wrap, everything else kind of looks like crap. It falls apart on you. So here we go. These are my anchor points. These are my spline marks. How you find the opposite side of that is you pull this tape back line up that mark again and then where the tape creases is halfway around you do that on both sides and that takes into account the different diameters between this end of the wrap and this end of the wrap so i'm gonna do that again Line my markup 
find my crease. There's my mark. Put it back down. And there we go. So now you have the spline, which is your trigger, and the top. Now, I'm going to try to show you this a little better on this blank than I could on that blacker, darker blank. So what I'm going to do is pull this white thread across my marks and then they're going to stick they should have stuck and then they're going to stick to my anchor points in theory and I'm going to tape it down a little more solid behind it Okay, same thing on the other side. Now we have two lines on the blank, 180 degrees from each other, top and bottom. Now you need to start your layout. <clears throat> so you're gonna make marks. Uh, there's my china pencil, I'm gonna do it in the white china so you can see it. You're going to make a mark every one inch. Okay. Then you go to the opposite side of the blank. And you do the same thing except you're going to stagger it by a half an inch. So you make your first mark at a half. And then you make marks every one inch. Okay, now this is way more mark than you need, but I'm trying to get it to where you guys can see it on camera. We have two straight lines. They're marked half inch apart. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the black thread. I'm going to do this first wrap in black and then you will pick it up with the original video and you can see what I'm doing at this point. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find my short point. And I'm going to come across my anchor point here. At the right angle to head. From one to the other. It's going to be right in there somewhere. Okay. Nope. Not quite steep enough. There we go. Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm crossing the string. Okay, and I'm going to run out and up on my anchor point on that double sided sticky tape and past a little bit. It's holding my thread for the moment. I'll tie this back off. Make sure it doesn't move. And I got it where I want it. Okay, now I'm going to finish this first wrap back in the other direction. And that intersection point is the most important point, especially when you're starting your wrap. And you want it to cross at exactly the right spot.
and that's the first wrap you'll come off and then you'll come back down I'll go ahead and do the second wrap because I did two black and I'll come in on my anchor point here and I'm gonna wrap on the upside of the black up being towards the tip up on my anchor point again I'll come back up I'm staying on the top side of the thread taking my time I know this video is going to get long but there's a lot of detail here I'm trying to give you as much as I'm trying to give you as much detail as I know which isn't a lot, honestly. This is not my forte, but I can do one. Okay, back up on the left anchor point. I'm gonna put a couple turns in that, and then I'm just gonna tape it off. Flip it out of the way, and then I want to pull one. I'm going to adjust. I don't even have my tools down anymore. I'm going to tighten these up, get them nice and straight, get my cross exactly right. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now the next thing you want to do is I want to pull this white out of the way before I get too much on top of it. What I'll do is get rid of all these little anchor points I have holding the white. It looks like most of them. I'll get underneath them. Maybe. They're pretty tight. I'm going to nip it. Nip it. Nip it. I'll do the same thing to the other side white. I'm going to get my threads tightened back up. I didn't wrap these first two bikes extremely tight because I wanted to be able to get this out without moving them too much. But as I start wrapping the copper, I'm really going to tighten down on my thread tension and that's just doing it by hand. Okay, now I'll just tighten these up, make sure my X's are good, where everything crosses. And then I'll pick up on the copper and we'll go back to the original video. Sorry about the camera issues and not being able to see what I'm doing, but now you can. That's the finished product, so it did turn out pretty nice. There, accent color time. So we're gonna pick up here with the, that's a copper. Okay, we're gonna pick up, we're gonna go on the high side of the black with the copper. Tie that off with a little bit of tape. Up and 
around the anchor point <clears throat> and then we're on the high side oops And we'll start our second one. Now, I'm making a huge mess with tape. I know that. However, ooh, I didn't go back down. Let's get back down the other side. One of the problems with this Pro Wrap Metallic is it likes to twist. So I stopped there and we'll start again. So I'm just going to tape off again. And I know I'm making a huge mess with tape. This is the only way I know how to do this. I'm sure there are much easier ways. But this is the simplest way for me. You can also do, you can pull multiple threads at the same time. Just, you know, cut you about 10 feet, straighten them out, drop them at your feet. You just got to be careful with doing that. So we're going to tape off again. Past the anchor point. I'm going to start up here high, get that one out of the way. Start high up here on the anchor point. And run our second strand of copper. Run that out, anchor, tape it off, cut it. Now we'll do three black. So now I've got two of each. I'm going to, uh, I'll take a minute with the burnishing tool here and, tool here and just tighten these and straighten them up a little bit before I get too far into this. Okay, got my intersections tight, straight, dots covered. Everything's pretty well tightened up. I'm going to clip off a tag. Start with black. Back to the anchor point. And I'm going to be on the high side. I started a little off there. Okay, on the high side of the copper. All right, there's one black. Let's pick up the second black. On the high side. Time for the three strands of copper. I cut six feet of this copper off the roll and let it untwist, kind of let it relax because it was starting to bunch up a little bit on me that last time. Now I just got to get them flat here. 
they don't cross over. And so I'm getting three coppers at once with this. Let them relax again. And I can feel them trying to twist in my fingers here. That is a twist there. And straighten them back out. And separate. Yeah, they're all twisted down here underneath me. That's the only problem with the metallic stuff. It's really pretty, but it is really a pain in the butt to work with. Okay. Because as you pull tension on it, it, the twist gets worse. I can feel it in my fingers here as I'm wrapping. I get a little further away, let the twist stay off the blank, keeping it flat. Don't want them to cross. Making sure I got enough to go all the way back, which I should with this three with the six feet that I peeled off. Alright, I got that anchored now. And six feet was about the right length. I had a little bit left over, but not too much waste. And that went a lot faster. There's enough left in there for some accent wraps, possibly. All right, let's burnish this baby one time again. Tighten everything up. Okay, four, four. That's, that's three, so it's time for four black. I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clip off four. All right, these would be a lot easier to do than the metallic thread. Just it's stiff, it's beautiful, royal pain to work with. All right, I'm going to take these off. Maybe. All right, now we're going with four black. Cross the anchor point, get them back in line. Okay, time for four coppers. Clean up my workstation here so I don't have such a mess. Okay, got my four copper strands here. I pulled them out, let them rest a little bit. Got some of the twists and kinks out of them. And I'm trying to put them together here where they're nice and straight to start with. We'll see how that works out. Find my anchor point. I'm gonna anchor my copper down right there. And I'll we'll start my four coppers. And I pulled one out of my anchor point. You have to anchor this stuff good, and I didn't. And it's starting to fray. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to start right there, flat.
Okay, now we're going to tackle the five black. Cut some of this out of the way. Okay, I got them pre cut, laid out flat. Put some of that up. I'm going to start them here at my anchor point. And I'm going to anchor them off good. Make sure they don't go anywhere. And we're going to stretch them out. <clears throat> and start laying down the fives. Okay, five coppers. And no, I'm not excited about it. But this is the last of the copper. We get these in, we'll cap it off with two black. And I think that'll be plenty of chevron. All right, we got them laid in here flat. I'm gonna tape these down really good. Straighten them out as much as I can. Oh, they're still trying to twist on me. Okay. Two blacks to finish it off. All right. There's one of my blacks. Back to my anchor point. My black's laid down. I pin them really well. All right, all we have left to do now, this is the top of the rod. Only this much will be showing once I tie it off here, because that's all we really need to do. But we need to figure out where we're going to do that. This is my reel seat for this rod. I know I'm setting this trigger at 11 and a half, which is pretty standard. You guys have seen me do that a hundred times already, which is there, which means I want to tie this off. Where the chevron actually disappears under the reel seat so i'm i'm going to tie it off back here and not wrap over this tape and what will happen what you will see is this will disappear right into the reel seat i'll have an epoxy ramp it'll explode uh, magnify right there it's gonna look awesome all right 
Let's tie this thing down. This is just a basic wrap. Nothing to it. I'll find my pedal. Too many pedals on here. Let's get it in wrap mode. Make sure we're tied down. We are. Okay. So, nothing at all to this. I'll come back here inside the real seat and I'm just going to start a wrap. Tie. Doesn't matter where I'm at because this is still inside the real seat. Better if it didn't jump over like that. It doesn't really matter though. This is completely out of sight and it is hard to wrap over all these changing elevations and thread here. Okay. Now, pull that through. Extremely tight. Pull this tape off. I'm going to burnish this back. Only thing you got to make sure of is you finish your last wrap going in there is not pinned. Make sure it's now pinned pretty good with your your tie down wrap because that will show okay snip it off done with that one now everything should be tied down oh, there's my razor blade I forgot to pull that tag in out that was on me but again we're underneath the real seat so it won't matter Okay, now this one does matter because this will be exposed. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get back to the top, which is here. So this will be real seat, nice chevron, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to stop it on the point of this chevron. So what I will do. it the other direction I'll come out here tie it down and this one I care about that last one I didn't care so much about all right so we're coming out that's trigger side the point of that chevron right there and we're going to wrap. Give another five or six turns. Two, three, four, five, six. Oop, that one jumped right there. Okay, I've spent the last 20 minutes getting rid of all the tape from this end it's going to be exposed. This end I just whacked it out of the way, doesn't matter. Like I said, from here back is under the real seat. I don't care what it looks like. It's not pretty, but again, I don't care. This end I'm concerned about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to comb these. 
so I can lay them down. This end, I did not put CP Extra on this last quarter inch. That's got CP Extra on it there. Ow. This like last eight wraps does not because I still wanted to be able to move it around because I'm going to do a trim wrap and hide these at the same time in theory. I'm trying to get them trying to get this last little bit perfectly straight. Those aren't bad. I'm going to cut some of this extra out of the way. A little bit of a haircut here to make it more manageable. Okay, I can get those to lay down fine. Don't have anything on the bottom. That is the oh, that's the top. Perfect. That's even better. Okay, here's where it gets tricky. All right, I'm gonna take one of these leftover coppers. slide this down out of the way That's as far as it's gonna go all right so this is the trigger side this is the bottom and I need my tape dispenser okay I'm gonna pin this back here out of the way, don't need nearly that much. Oh. Okay, now start my black, my trim band. Okay, now here's where you get to hide all of this mess Come out over. okay there we go now let me put this back in wrap let me find my pedal again okay Okay, so let me put in a thread pool. Where's the bottom? There's the bottom. All right, that's the thread pool for the black. Okay, I'm gonna put a thread pool in for the copper. hidden I got about five turns okay only thing that's left is the copper trim band. All right, now we're going to do some co copper trim band here. First of all, I'm going to cut it there. And I'm going to pull it there out of the little sight. And then we're going to start with about four, I'm going to do four or five wraps here of copper.
that's it. A little more burnishing to do on this end wrap here, get it nice and pretty, put a very thin coat of epoxy on top of it. There you go, subscriber question answered, how to do a Chevron wrap. I haven't done one in 14 years. I'm sure there's other videos out there that can make a lot less mess and can do it faster, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.